Hello folks, thank you for tuning in to our little presentation on pastoral planning here in our Somerset Swansea Catholic community. Since my arrival about three years ago, we faced the situation of a changing town, a changing church situation in our area. And whenever we're approaching change like that, uh, as I told the folks at our parish meeting, I tend to look at things not as a, a glass that is half empty, but more as a glass that is half full. So I tend to be a little more optimistic and positive in, in my approach. And, and I think and I hope this comes across in, in our presentation today. We have a challenge before us in our community. Uh, a few weeks ago, I presented the uh, sacramental index, the, the statistics for our three churches, our three parishes, and uh, also some st statistics from the diocese uh, about parishes and about our, our clergy shortage that we are facing. This past year, we baptized 39 infants. We buried 101 parishioners. There's a, a big difference between those two important numbers. That's in, indicative of the challenge that's before us. The town is changing. Uh, it's an aging population. There's uh, indifference to organized religion and church participation. COVID has affected us deeply in many, many ways. And there's still remnants of that in our returning to church since the COVID pandemic. And so we're challenged to be uh, proactive as we look forward uh, to the future. In January, I called together a, a group of parishioners uh, from each of our three separate parishes to start looking at our situation. And we prayed together, we looked at statistics, we talked about options. And one of the first reactions from this group of parishioners was, we have a wonderful opportunity before us. Bishop de Cunha and the officials at the Diocese of Fall River are giving us the option to plot our future. It, it's not coming down from on high, but, but we're given the opportunity now to make a decision and to make it work and to run with it. There were three options that I, I presented. The first, status quo. Everything stays the same. We vetoed that from the beginning. We can't stay the same because when you stay the same, you die. The second option was to, to merge the three parishes into one and to close two of our church buildings, sell the property, and merge everything together. There were pros and cons to that. And then we looked at the third option, which is to merge our three separate parishes into one, but for now and into the future, the foreseeable future, to keep our three parish properties and our three churches open. As you all know, we are blessed with the presence and ministry of Father Ken, Father Gabriel, and Father Quigley, and Father Butler, who help in, in so many different ways during the week and especially on weekends. And so we have the, the priest power, if you will, uh, to keep our three churches open. We also talked about the use of our three church properties. Our three church properties, each are, are unique properties and beautiful buildings that we use together as a community. Uh, whether it be the uh, hall at St. Patrick's with the great uh, commercial kitchen that we have, or whether it be the daily mass at St. Louis de France, or the classroom space at St. Thomas More and the parish offices in the, the rectory that's large enough to contain all that. 
So there's, there's wonderful uses and there could be even more uses for our properties in the future. So again, pros and cons for that third option. And then we decided to pray about it and to study it some more. And after that prayer and discussion, which is a really healthy, honest, a positive uh, discussion, we decided to pursue the third option, which would be to ask Bishop de Cunha to merge our three separate parishes, St. Louis de France, St. Patrick, and St. Thomas More, into one new reality. But we are asking to keep our three church buildings open to be used by that one new parish that we're asking the bishop to establish. When we do that, the name of the church building stays the same. It remains St. Patrick or St. Louis de France or St. Thomas More. The parish name changes, and we'll talk about that in a minute. In reality, in our discussion, we talked about what should our focus be? Is it buildings? Or really, is it community and people? That's what we're charged with, to build up and to strengthen the community of faith. And so we'd like to put our energy into that building up of the community. We've already experienced so many good things in the past three years. And especially in these last months, uh, coming from the COVID pandemic and our response to COVID, working in faith formation with our younger families and our children, and most recently with our celebration of the most holy days of our year, the Sacred Triduum, where this past year we celebrated at St. Louis de France Church, and it was so obvious so evident the energy, the spirit, the excitement, the faith of our parishioners all joined together in that one experience. And just this past weekend on June 12th, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of religious uh, life for Sister Kathy and the 25th anniversary of priesthood for Father Gabriel. And we celebrated well as one community. And so many people commented on the wonderful experience they had, both at Mass and at the, the luncheon that followed. It was really positive and, and full of, of energy. The spirit was alive for sure. So as we look forward now to this forming of a new community, I think it offers us a great opportunity to, to strengthen our commitment to the Lord and His Church, to share gifts and talents, to build up parish ministries. Already, our, our parish organizations like the Men's Club or the Women's Guild, the Social Justice Committee, Faith Formation, we're already inviting members of all three churches to participate. So, now we have a common unity with a, a common name, a common identity that we can build off of. Now, does that negate, does that negate our, our history? Not at all. I like to refer to it as our legacy. We have a wonderful legacy of faith from St. Patrick's, from St. Louis de France, from St. Thomas More. We have wonderful examples of faith of the parishioners who have built up these communities. That we don't negate, but we take that with us as we move forward into this new reality. The other challenge I see happening in the fall would be for us to come together and as we now have this new identity, ask the question, what do we want our parish to look like? What do we want our parish, our community, to be in the wider community? That's the real challenge and the real good work 
And we have so many gifts and talents right here in Somerset and Swansea to make that a reality. I talked about a common identity. When the bishop establishes a new parish, he asks the, the committee, the planning committee, to submit three names for a new parish along with their request to establish the parish. After prayer and thought, I presented to the committee my, my first choice, my personal choice, and they unanimously uh, agreed with it. And that would, I would love to see our new community named Our Lady of Peace for a number of reasons. First, Our Blessed Mother, Our Lady, is, is an example for us, is a unifying force within the church universal. She's a wonderful model for service and, and to be a disciple of the Lord. Our Lady of Peace, Mary, who is serene before the Lord, Mary, who knows the Lord's peace from within and shows it out to the world. And don't we all agree that this world is certainly in need of Christ's peace? And we can be those instruments of Christ's peace. We have a, a, another title for Mary that we'd like to submit, but I'm also open to, to hearing some ideas from you. And so if you do have an idea and would like to share that, I certainly ask you to, you know, jot it on a piece of paper and, and send it in through the collection basket or through the mail, or, or send us an email and just say, here, maybe think about this, Father, as another option too. So what's the process now as we move forward? Over these summer months, the committee will be getting together again, and we have to present a formal letter to the bishop, asking Bishop de Cunha to merge our communities. Once he receives that letter and the three suggestions, the three options that we're presenting him for a name, uh, he has to go before the priest council and just seek their advice. And then after that is done, he presents the formal decree of establishment. I see that happening sometime in September. Uh, there's no date set, but there's something we, that we can celebrate together. Again, remember, we're not closing any of our church buildings. The mass schedule is not changing. It's staying the same. Uh, parish organizations, are remaining the same and hopefully growing, growing into the future. It's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that will make life a little easier for us to focus on that new one identity. So, in conclusion, I do ask your help. I ask your prayers. I ask your support, which has been so positive and, and so encouraging uh, in these three years that I've served here in Somerset and Swansea. And I ask you to be open to the Holy Spirit working in all of us as we look forward to new ways in which we may grow the church and be instruments of God's peace right here in this area. I will try my best to keep you informed as we move forward, and I do thank you for all your help and all your prayers and all your support. God bless.